So I wanted to post this quick video to highlight a question that I received through the e-scouting elk masterclass. And while I was getting ready to post this answer, I thought this would be a great opportunity to highlight and show some of the things that go on in this class. If you're not a member of the class or you're thinking about this e-scouting class, this is the kind of thing that we do in the class. So obviously the course has all of these modules. I'm in the course right now. So here are all the modules within the course. And I'm down here on this fire zones and logging areas. And I was getting ready to post this question over here to this discussion form. You can see that right now we have three discussions going on about this particular concept or this particular module. So let's quickly, let's just review what this question was. Have you ever found Google Earth Pro to incorrectly label an old fire? These photos that I've attached I had originally labeled and thought that they were beetle kills before I knew how to turn on the fire layers in Google Earth Pro. OnX does not show a specific historical fire in this area. I would think that the fire would have burned up these trees showing up on the ground. I'm kind of stumped on what this actually is. Thank you for any thoughts you have on this area. Well, that question is actually a lot of questions in one. And I thought it was a great opportunity to kind of highlight some of the things that we do within the course. So to answer this particular question, let's take a look at the images that he sent. Before I get started, I want to make sure that I point out that I do not have a specific waypoint. I do not have a specific location for this question. So I'm not able to zoom in at Google Earth's highest resolution and really do a full detailed analysis. I'm just going to make my assumptions and I'm going to post my answer based on the imagery that he provided or this the member provided. They provided five images with the question. So this is the first image and you can clearly see in this photo that there's no virtually no live timber. But what jumps out to me is all of the timber that's on the ground, how complete it is, how widespread it is. It's virtually all dead or in this case there's a few trees down here that are still alive. When you look out on the landscape here, you can clearly see there's a lot of timber on the ground. But if you look close, you'll see these black streaks. We talk about this a lot in the course with beetle kills, logging areas, and fire zones. You can see these shadows, these long black thin shadows. These are in the cave of trees that are still standing. In this photo, these trees that are still standing, like right here, right here, this little patch, there's a few right here. It's hard to tell sometimes if trees are standing or if they're on the ground. So you can see, not only can we see the shadows, but you can see the blurriness of these standing trees. For example, right here, the blurriness around this tree shows me that there's possibly still a few limbs. And that's what's creating this little bit of blurriness around that stick. If I was just looking at this image and even the second image that I'm going to show you in a second, I would tend to say this is not a beetle kill for a lot of reasons. One, the widespread clearing of this area. It's not patchy. It doesn't have that classic beetle kill mosaic look to it. And there's very little multi-stage dying processes tend to want to lean me towards identifying it as a fire. That's without seeing any fire layers, without having any idea what I'm looking at. So in the second photo, kind of confirmed what I was saying is it's pretty widespread. It's got a pretty distinct line and it just makes sense that this is a fire line that works around this edge. Beetle kills, in my experience, at least most beetle kills, again, guys, in e-scouting, there is no hard and fast rules, but if this was a beetle kill, it would not, beetles don't kill the trees generally in a straight, well-marked line. So when I start to see these lines of demarcation, I immediately wanna say, man, this really looks like a fire. So let's take a look at the third image that was sent. So in this image, this is from Google Earth Pro, and they have downloaded the shape files for fires, either within just the area that they want to look at or for the whole United States, North America. And they have turned on that fire layer, and it looks like they've left it in default. In the default layer, it will tend to want to make these fires into shades of red. So just from looking at this photo, I can tell a couple things. Number one, that pretty much confirms 
what we just said, that it's a fire layer because we can clearly see the fire zone matches those lines of demarcation that we were just talking about. The second thing that jumps out at me is that there is two shades of red. So what this tells me in this area, I know nothing about this area, but it looks like there's two fires that potentially happened in the same area. When you see in Google Earth, when you download these fire layers, fire layers that we talk about in the course, when you see the various shades of red, they're usually indicative of different fires. And in the West, I wanna point this out too before I move on, is I'm seeing more and more examples of old fires that are burning a second time. And it can get confusing when you start to see a 2019 fire overlaid with a 2002 fire. That's not the case in this example, but I did want to point this out because when I see this, that's my first inclination is that this is two fires that have burnt the same area twice. So let's jump back to that first image. The other part of this question was, as far as the trees on the ground, why did those trees not burn up in the fire? Well, I think I've already answered that question, but as a fire moves through these areas, it burns the trees. Only a certain percentage of those trees will fall and technically burn up. The rest of the trees will burn in a standing format. And then over the course of the 20 years or however many years it takes, and that varies. Depends on how exposed the slope is, how steep the slope is, the condition of the soil, how much wind those areas get, moisture level, all kinds of factors will determine how long that timber stands before it starts to fall. So the reality is this timber was not on the ground when the fire went through. It's a result of the fire, but many years later. Let's jump to the last image to highlight some final thoughts on this question. So in this image, you can see he's got a pretty nice setup here. We've got a dual monitor set up for e-scouting. We've got our notes here. He's got Onyx maps open on one screen. He's got Google Earth with all, you can't see it, I've grayed it out or blurred it out. He's got all these layer installs that we go through in the course. He's got them in the right order and he's obviously really paying attention. Here we've got Onyx that does not show this fire in the same area. And then you've got this Google Earth all of a sudden showing you what looks like actually two fires. What this does point out is that if you were only using one tool in this example on X, you would really have a hard time figuring out that this was a fire area. This prompted all the questions. All the timber on the ground, why didn't it burn up? I'm looking at Onyx maps. I don't see a fire, so what is going on here? Using multiple tools keeps you from making these kind of mistakes or getting down these paths without having all of the information. And I hope you got some value out of this question. I hope you'll check out the course at treelineacademy.net.